Well, he was a fantastic player. And a new book out is right now. And Howard Bryant is the author. The book is Ricky, the life and legend of an American original. Howard Bryant joins us right now. Howard, it's Brian Kenny. How are you? Good, Ryan. How are you doing? Good to see you again. I, I'm doing well. Look, this is your 10th book. Congratulations. Your, your book on Hank Aaron was fantastic. I can't believe it was 10 years ago. Uh, you just 12. told me that. It's, 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 oh, it's even 12. See, I'm even shortening oh. now. All right. Howard, what intrigued you about, obviously a great player, but what intrigued you specifically about Ricky Henderson? Well, I think what it was about Ricky was I was really looking for a, a subject. And I covered Ricky my rookie year, my first year covering the A's in 1998 for the San Jose Mercury News. Ricky was in his last stint with Oakland. And I was always fascinated by Ricky. I'm a kid of the 80s. Ricky and Tim Raines, they were everything. And I think the thing that really jumped out at me about Ricky now was about time, was to talk about time and what time does. Because when you go through the day by days and you research this book, Ricky was not popular. Ricky was one of the most disliked players. A lot of people didn't like his game. They didn't like his brashness. But then by the time we talk about him now he is that combination of satchel page and yogi berra where everybody has a ricky story and and it mm -hmm. really is a story of how you go from your just your accomplishments turn you in from being a, a villain to being somebody that everybody embraces and that everybody loved and i wanted to really tell that story of a 40-year story in baseball yeah, you know, it, he, he was cocky. He was ultra confident. He was stealing an amazing amount of bases. 11 years, he averaged 82 steals a year. Averaged. So how mind-blowing was that? I mean, we kind of knew it when we saw it. It was before on-base was fully embraced, right? And he had like a 400 on-base almost every year. So do you get the sense he was still underrated as to how great he really was? Well, there are two things in, in there that I just think are fascinating, Brian. Number one was in that montage, you showed Ricky went with the yellow A's top and he makes a snatch catch out in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in left field. That was the final out of Mike Warren's no-hitter. That was the first time he introduced the snatch catch. Oh, man. He does it in the final out of a no-hitter. And the other thing was, was that Ricky played from 1979 to 2003. When he joined the Boston Red Sox, before the, to start the 2002 season, he had stolen more bases from 1979 to 2001 than the entire Red Sox franchise. <laughs> he outstole oh an entire team. <laughs> I didn't that's know that. Incredible. That is, that, that, that's mind-blowing. Howard, let's get to this. The end of the Yankees days, right? 1989. That did not go down well. I had to look it back up. He had a 392 on base for the Yankees that year. It wasn't his best year, but he was accused of quitting. What is your read on that now? Well, th those years, you got to go back to Billy Martin, who told him, the way we all know, if we, once again, if you're of a certain generation, you're not a superstar unless you do it in New York. And Billy Martin had been trying to get him to New York. He gets to New York in 1985, puts up one of the greatest seasons of all time, 146 runs scored in 143 games. But the Yankees, in the four years, in the four and a half years that Ricky was with them, you had Ricky, Mattingly, Winfield. They never had sole possession of first place for a single day in September. For all of those years with all those players, mm. Gidry, Baylor, Ricky, Winfield. And so now you're looking at a guy that people are saying, hey, he's a loser. Puts up huge numbers, but he's not a winning ball player. And that's the reason why when he goes back to Oakland in August, I'm sorry, in June of, of 89, and then absolutely destroys the Toronto Blue Jays in the ALCS and then does it again in, in, 80, in, the, uh, in the World Series against the Giants. That's what this was all about. Ricky wanted to prove to the world that not only do I put up record-breaking numbers, but when I'm on, I am not just a winning ball player. I'm the best player in the game. Yeah, he was a monster in the postseason. Here's the stuff of legend. Give us some, I don't know, any quirky thing, Howard, that you found out. Again, I hear Ricky stories all the time, too. Give us something. Uh, one of my favorite, my favorite Ricky story is 1994. He goes back to Oakland and they're going, they're making their first trip back to Toronto and on the billboard going up Spadina Avenue, right in front of Sky Dome is this gigantic billboard of Joe Carter. So everybody on the A's bus is talking about where were you when Joe Carter hit the home run? And so they're going around the bus talking about where they were. One of the, the guys, Dave Feldman, one of the TV guys, he says, oh, I was in my house in San Francisco. And everybody's talking about where they were. And then in the back of the bus, you hear this voice, I was on second base. <laughs>
<laughs> and that is like the ultimate mic drop of all the stories. Who can beat that? Right. I was on second base when Joe Carter hit the home run. The book is Ricky, the life and legend of an American original. Uh, Howard, again, people should go back and also while they're getting that book, get your Hank Aaron book, which was fantastic. Best of luck with this one, Howard. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, it's good to see you again. Thank you. All right. Howard Bryant there.